Hi, so today um, I'm going to talk to you about this uh, interesting little radio that um, my son got from a relative for his birthday. It's the O-Reel or Our reel uh, Model A1. It's advertised as a walkie-talkie for kids. Supposedly it has FRS and GMRS, but what I've in fact discovered is that it has um, a PMR, I think it's personal mobile radio, which is used in Europe at about 446 to 446.1 megahertz, which is in the upper end of the 70 centimeter ham band in the US. If you look at the descriptions, it shows uh, the different bands that, the different frequency ranges that uh, this supposedly goes into for different models. And I would, you know, one would assume that the, the uh, non FRS GMRS bands would not be on one sold in the US or offered on US but uh, apparently I got uh, one with the FRS and the PMR bands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have fully charged or full power batteries. This uses triple A's, this uses double A's and it eats them like crazy. So if your kids leave them on, they'll be gone in a few hours but they run down really fast because it's using triple A's. This one lasts you know, a couple days or whatnot. Um, but I'm going to take the fully full juiced battery ones um, as far as uh, walking away from here at different distances, like I said, 10 feet, probably 50 feet, and probably 100 feet. Um, and I'll have a close-up shot of the computer screen here comparing the, the uh, signals. Uh, you'll see lots of, um, you know, when I'm doing the close-up um, uh, transmissions, you'll see lots of sidebands, but you'll see that this thing is far noisier. Not, not that it's unexpected, but you'll get an idea of how noisy this is compared to this, which is not, you know, like I said, these were 60 bucks 12 years or so ago. And you know they're not the highest quality radios, but they're they're pretty good for most people. These are very noisy. And then I'll show you um, on the 70 centimeter band how noisy these things um, actually get with all the spurs. And I'll do it at different distances as well. I have a second set of radios here receiving as well as my um, my SDR setup, which I made just a quick little stub antenna um, for a piece of coax, and then I cut this this part for the. Um, the FRS GMRS band, uh, but it'll still receive the 70 centimeter fine. Um, but uh, this setup is connected up to the computer so that you can see the noise on the screen, which will be on the close up shot. Um, and then uh, uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, put pan the camera so you can see me walk away as I'm doing the close up shot on the screen here. I'll see if I can split screen it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, so the idea is I'll do both of these. Uh, at different uh, different distances, and we'll see how how uh, the noise spurs go down as I move away. I suspect this will still be noisier even even when it's not close up. Much noisier compared to this. We'll see how it goes. First one is the T6500. And then the A1. And then I will move 10 feet away. So here's the T6500 at 10 feet. And here's the A1 at about 10 feet. T6500 at about 25 feet. The A1 at about 25 feet. Now I'm going to do testing of the uh, Oreo A1 on the 70 centimeter band. It's going to be somewhere in the name neighborhood of uh, 446.050 megahertz. Um, it doesn't keep on the signal very well at all. 
Um, so uh, according to the PMR channels, it's not actually really on those channels at all. It's somewhere in the 70 centimeter band, but uh, here goes the testing. First, uh, we're three feet away from the radio. You can see lots of spurs uh, from that uh, on there. Uh, quite a bit more than the FRS band for either the A1 or the T6500, which does not go into the 70 centimeter band. Uh, but now I'll move 10 feet away and then farther out like I did last time. The A1 at 10 feet. As you can see, this is very noisy with lots of spurs in the sidebands. Um, and uh, they uh, improve, of course, with distance, but it's much noisier than even the FRS uh, signal on the same radio. So I'm guessing the output filters are pretty bad. Um, you know, I'm not, a, not an engineer, but uh, this is a pretty noisy thing. Good for the kids, I suppose. I don't know if I'd want them to use it on all the other bands. And, kind of annoy some of the hams off, hams quite a bit. Uh, and uh, the fact that it's very noisy uh, means that it'll probably annoy people as well. Um, these probably aren't very powerful. I've heard the range on these is more than a few hundred feet, but still, it's not, uh, not the best. So be aware that if you get these, um, that they might not be on band in some of the uh, label, some of the label specifications. So you probably want to test these out if you get these. They're great for very short distances, but I can't imagine going farther than that. Maybe I'll do a distance, a real distance test sometime in the FRS band, uh, but not today. Uh, one last thing I wanted to mention is that, um, you know, so people don't get mad at this or whatever, the kids are locked out of the ham things. It's only set and locked on the FRS frequencies, so the only time these were on the uh, 70 centimeter band was when uh, I originally discovered this and wanted to figure out what channels, uh, what frequencies each of the four or each of the nine um, ham frequencies it was on. Also, during the te testing purposes for the video, the kids are locked out, so they're not, they're not going to be running around taking up the ham frequencies with these things. I recommend that anyone who buys these test these out to make sure you know what frequencies these are transmitting on so that uh, no one has any problems. Anyway, I uh, just thought I'd let you know. Uh, good for the kids. Uh, but be careful that they are uh, on the frequencies as labeled, or at least uh, that uh, they're locked out, their kids are locked out of these if they're used by kids. Thanks for watching. Bye.